all right hello fortinos brothers and sisters welcome back to ministry revealed it is december 16th 2022 one down and only two options left not for this year but I believe in the truth of all the revelation that we've been given. The final two opportunities in existence, period. For those of you who have been around for a little while, even just a short while, but have been following lately, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Brothers and sisters, we are at the, we're at the finish line. We're right here. We're on the 16th of December. And this is our window right here. This is the window of the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ. We know the revelation of the end that has come through the leading of the Spirit over the past five years here in this ministry. We've been given the confirmation through the Holy Ghost that this end time understanding is 50 days, then the 14 years of tribulation, and then the 50th Jubilee. It is the end time code. We've spoken about it often. We've got a video that discusses it. I'm going to show it when we get to that point just as a, as a passing thing. But brothers and sisters, I'm going to share more exciting information about this today. I'm going to build it up and lead you into it to make sure that you're grasping what I'm saying, that those that have been around for a while, you're gonna say, okay, I understand that stuff, I understand that stuff. I'm gonna lead it to build more evidence though, especially for those who are still not quite understanding how it all lays out. We're gonna help you understand it, and then I'm gonna give you more confirmation to it, but I don't wanna just give the information What's the point of just giving the information so that nobody can understand? You get it? It has to be a process of understanding the revelation. So you guys can see it, you can understand it, you can know for yourselves, you can search it out. That's why I do the videos the way I do them. If I were to just say, here, this is what it is, what use would that be to any of you? It would be no point, right? Because the story of the entirety of this ministry is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the revelation of the word. The gospels have revealed themselves to us. The Psalms, the prophets, the, the, the Torah, all of these things and more have been revealed for the revelation of the is to come. That is what's been happening for five years. It's nothing new for us that have been around for a while. We've been seeing and following the process the whole way, but we're coming to the end. I was talking to my wife today over dinner, and if you guys, who, especially those who have been around for a while, you'll, you'll remember we used to go from feast to feast like so many do, but every time we did it, we had greater revelation. There was more understanding. There was more discernment that came about. It was never just the date and the timing of when this would take place, it was a process of his revelation. You see, if it was only about the date, we wouldn't have the revelation of the gospels. We wouldn't have the revelation of the years. We wouldn't have the revelation of the timing. We wouldn't have the revelation of the Torah and the Psalms and all of these other pieces that have revealed themselves along the way. It was a process of the spirit leading. That's what it's been the whole way through. And when I was talking with my wife and I was saying, you know, you remember even for like the first, what, say about four years, it's been five years, not a little over five for the first, maybe even three and a half years, we were going from, from event to event and growing in the understanding as we were getting there all the way until about later last year, maybe the fallish of last year. We weren't, we weren't looking so much of event of event anymore. It was getting a little bit more specific. And then last year, at about this time, and when December came to an end, we said and we understood that we were no longer needing to go from event to event to event. 
because in the revelation of the is to come we were given the revelation of 717 which is like being on a podium right the middle one is first place the one on the left is second place and the one on the third is uh, on the right is the third place if you're looking at it so even though it looks like 717 you you can also say 177 first second third that's part of the revelation of the end of days as well and what it was was the revelation of the feasts of the lord the three times they were to show up to the lord okay and that the middle was the revelation of the pre-trib bride of christ the first group that goes to the third heaven pre-trib the one on the left is where they go to paradise just like the one who was in that position when christ was on the cross jesus told him he would go to paradise and we know that that is connected to passover it's seven years of seals and it's seven days of unleavened bread the first position is accounted for as the um uh, 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 uh feast of weeks however the feast of weeks isn't observed until the year's end at the circuit of the sun and then you have the the third place and theirs is the city they're they're going to be when the lord returns feet down on the mount of olives in the seventh year when the seven years of trumpets are coming to an end and it just so happens that that third place is what the feast of tabernacles seven days seven years and when it's over it's the only one that's what it's the only one that has that eighth day out of the three because when it's over it's what it's the beginning of the millennial reign it's the it's the it'll be the final jubilee year and the restoration of all things and the millennial reign you see how perfect it works out so what had happened is when this time or when the end of december was here last year and these things had passed and we had understood this revelation of of uh, uh the sun and and uh, uh the stars we didn't quite have the moon and we didn't fully yet understand the two months following off with the with the sun being off we didn't fully have following it for two months and we didn't yet of course have the moon until the last month or so month two months and so what had happened well we had an understanding we knew that it was connected to what passover no tabernacles no it was connected to the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest but that it wasn't going to be observed until the year's end at the circuit of the sun which means the turning of the sun so what had happened is we we didn't know that the full turning yet we had known things about it for a long time but what happened for the first half of this year we knew it wasn't connected to passover and unleavened bread and all those things so as we were watching the first half of the year we were digging deeper into scripture we were getting more revelation and greater understanding we were revealed the two witnesses which was just mind-blowing and so many other things along the way and we weren't watching for anything until about june because that was uh uh, uh the solstice time and that was the time of taurus that used to be called the beginning and so that's where we were focusing and then we got closer and we dug deeper and more revelation and greater clarity and greater clarity came until we realized oh my goodness it all equals the circuit of the sun where the sun would be where the moon is supposed to be and the sun is two months off and this is where it leads us well do you know what this means for next year if this wasn't the time it means we wouldn't be looking for anything. There would be no high watch dates spoken of in this ministry until around November, December, preparing us for the circuit of the sun in 2023. Do you see, the reason I'm saying this is the process that the spirit has led us in, seeking, seeking, searching, not knowing which one, how they were all connected. They all showed a little bit of possibility along the way until greater clarity and greater clarity 
and greater clarity to the point that this year it just so happens that the circuit of the sun is in the midst of the Jews feast of tabernacles which is Hanukkah and why is it the Jews feast of tabernacles because if it was the Lord's feast it would have been the Lord's feast of tabernacles in John chapter 7 and it wasn't you see we've talked about this right for 10 years from about 2014 to 2024 this is the only time the about the midst of the feast where the circuit of the sun shows up right where it's supposed to be we showed that this is where it was even back in 29 AD about the time those words were spoken in John chapter 7 that Hanukkah was the exact seven eight day period from the 19th to the 26th in 29 AD what on earth were the chances of that you see well you're going to see because in all of this we've been talking about the understanding of 70 years the understanding of 50 days that comes before that year count is over and the beginning of the 14 year start we've said it many times the 14 years don't begin until the red horse rider i'm going to show you all these things proved out again and we're going to add another nugget from an apocryphal book that we've talked on over the years and even recently that was from a video which this clip i'm going to show you from again from ken johnson because he does a lot of stuff with the apocryphas but you know how it works in this ministry i don't go looking in the apocryphas to find something and then try to to say oh this is what it equals let's go find it in scripture that's never ever ever been the way it has always been the revelation coming from scripture And then people understanding the revelation, having seen it for themselves, searched it out, are looking then to other things and to see what else they can find. And bam, it happens all the time. And that's what happened with this. It was our brother Roy again, who found, uh, actually, he found another portion within that video that was very interesting about those who would not taste of death. But as I continued watching the video, what I'm going to share with you tonight is this piece that really stood out to me that you guys will fully understand if you've been following for a while because it relates to this four and 70 yet to the Lord God being 70. Which is why it's the 70th year that we're in according to the Lord God and where he counts. But to the Jews from when they came into the land. 74 years was already completed on may 14th or ir5 they would say on their calendar and that would mean we are in the 75th year right it'd be like 74 and a half or so well the lord said exactly that remember he said when you come into the land and begin to plant all manner of trees so we know that there's this connection to that period of time and at that time is when the fifth the the 14 years would begin when the attack by syria comes which is the second attack that will take place in israel we know the first two in northern israel and then at the end of the 50 days when world war three when it all will begin nation against nation kingdom against kingdom it will start with that attack by syria and those with syria compassing about jerusalem and destroying them and the jews fleeing that is the official beginning of tribulation now you see we've said this many times right that it's the official beginning but it's already started you know what i mean the white horse rider we know is the son of man we've been talking about it now for what three years we've proven it over and over and over so when the escape happens at the beginning of 50 days and the 40 days of the son of man before the 50th day in the attack that follows it's kind of tribulation right i think it's pretty straightforward that we can still say it's tribulation but the official 14 years and peace being removed from the earth is at 
the red horse rider when Syria attacks Jerusalem and destroys it, and they have all fled or have been taken captive or killed. That is the official beginning of the 14 years. And according to scripture, we know when the Lord told us that would be. It's awesome. Okay? It's so awesome. And we've spoken on these things. We've dug into these things. And now we're going to bring about even more confirmation. Do you know how often that happens in this ministry, guys? You guys know it for yourselves that have been around for a while. But anybody that's new, you're going to say, oh, what's he doing going to Apocrypha for this? Why is he going to an extra book for that? We're not going to it to prove anything. We're showing evidence of what has been revealed in this ministry for a long time. Proven out in the Apocrypha. And what's going to blow your mind is when I, when I saw this and I went to it and I started preparing the video, I was like, oh, this is so awesome. And I was telling my wife about it. And that's what I was getting at. You know, we were looking at everything, everything, everything. And then it got more precise. And then it got more precise. And then it got so precise, we didn't have to look for six months at a specific time frame because we knew it had to at least be connected to something with the solstice. And then we got greater clarity, greater clarity, and it brought us to here. So the clarity got so intense that it brought us to the revelation of this timing, which we've been on now for a while, because of the 70 and the four, because of the sun, the moon, the stars, because of the gospels and the revelation of it, of the 50, 1450, every single part and piece equals December 2022, the beginning. All of it. That's why it's so exciting. That's why, do you really think the Lord is going to say, wow, one more year, two more years, three more years, when we have nothing left to look at because now we've got the revelation of when it's going to take place? Could you imagine how disappointing that would be knowing that there is no true watch date until the time frame of the circuit of the sun? At the turn of the year, because that is the time when the first fruits of the wheat harvest are observed. That is the pre trip bride of Christ. That is this the worker group from among them that will remain to work for the Lord. You understand how, how painful it would be knowing that? And knowing that for an entire year, after everything we've revealed, after everything we've been given to understand for five years, we now get down to the precision of this and we still have years to go. You see, it's not, it's not because of that, but I'm saying how difficult it would make it every single year knowing that. But you see why it's not going to be? because of what I'm going to continue to share with you here tonight. You're going to see for yourselves. This is it. For anybody that's new to the ministry, you don't have much time left. But if you want to understand or begin to understand what we're talking about here in this ministry, you're going to want to come and check out these intro. Just this series here, these are the intro, what we call the intro videos. But the most important are these three right here. These three videos, a Bible study, a 30-minute Bible study, and a 30-minute Bible study, and then a big one to help you understand how on earth all of this was missed. It's going to begin with this one here just real quick. You can go into the description box under the video, and you can find all the links, the links to the website, the forum where we've got people all over, all over the world. It's free to join. It'll take you a few seconds of like-minded brothers and sisters all over the world. You can go to ministryrevealed.com. But all the links, all the videos are there. One click, free download. You don't need any apps or anything. And the description box are underneath as well. The, 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 the sheets, the info that I'm reading from, if you wanted it, is in the description box as well. And we have a book on Ministry Revealed that you can download on free PDF as well and go into greater detail of these things. You see, this first one right here is where it all began. 
and it's called the revelation of who the gospels are speaking to and what that means is matthew mark and luke the synoptic gospels we're told in the end the first will be last the last will be first it in the end it's luke mark matthew you're going to find out that luke is speaking to the pre-trib bride of christ and he's also speaking to a group from among them who will be chosen to work during the time of seals to help Mark's group wake up during the time of the greatest revival in human history. Mark's group is the, is the world, or the, the Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel. It represents the world and what you would call some of the sleeping church. Oh, sure, they, they claim Christ, but they're not ready. They're not watching. They're not diligently seeking him. They're too busy in the things and the affairs of this world and don't spend their time with them. Don't give them thanks. That's the Mark group, but it really encompasses the world as well. They're going through the tribulation of seals, but the church isn't aware of it because why? Because the entire world for hundreds of years has been taught from the gospel of Matthew. Matthew is written to the Jews, the house of Judah. They're going to be removed, as you heard me talk about here in the beginning. They're going to be removed from the land and for the next seven years removed from the land and at the end of seals at the end of the the sixth year in that seventh year when the rapture of the great multitude takes place at the time of passover maybe second passover when that happens matthew's group are going to be coming in as well the house of judah is going to come in and the seven years of trumpets will then begin and the time of the Gentiles will be over, and it will now be the time of the house of Judah. It will be the time of the Jews, the rebuilding of the city and the streets and the temple. The Lord will have been on Mount Zion. The two witnesses will be there. And a group from among Mark's group are going to be sealed as the 144,000, and they're going out to work during the time of trumpets. All right? the seven years of trumpets. It sounds outrageous. It sounds, oh, this guy has lost his marbles. I promise you, if all you do is start with a 30-minute Bible study, it is all scripture. And if you want more, you can go to the book on ministryrevealed.com and read chapter one to get more detail. I promise you, it'll be worth every moment of your time. If you've ever wondered why there were the these apparent contradictions in the gospels you will wonder no more the answer is prophecy is built into the gospels and it's not just the discourses it is riddled throughout that's why jesus was arrayed in a gorgeous robe which means white radiant in luke that's why in mark he was arrayed in purple and in matthew he was arrayed in scarlet you see were they colorblind no it was prophecy built in gorgeous white robe is to the bride mark is purple matthew is scarlet they are the tribulation colors of purple and scarlet hello when you begin to understand these things then you'll come to the second intro video another 30 minute bible study and you're going to understand now that the truth is the tribulation is 14 years long but that portion of that 40, 50 days that comes first, you're going to realize that that's Luke's discourse. Then it's seven years for Mark and seven years for Matthew. That's the revelation of the discourses. Luke's is that about is that 50 day period of time. Mark is seven years of seals. Matthew is seven years of trumpets. And that's what you're going to begin to understand after you begin to understand who the gospels are speaking to. Then you'll grasp the 14 years and you'll be able to see that 11th video on the understanding of the discourses. And when you come to this third video, it's all because of Matthew. It's going to speak for itself <laughs> because it's my voice telling you, right? You're going to be able to, it's going to speak for itself in the sense that it's all because of Matthew. You're going to see that it's because of Matthew and all of our lives for hundreds of years people having been taught from the foundation of the gospel of matthew that is the entirety of the answer and why because it was god's timing if everybody knew for hundreds of years that we should all be learning from luke so that we could be prepared ready watching accounted worthy to escape all these things 
not be a part of the tribulation, but be a part of the bride of Christ. Do you understand we have insight into God's plan? Into God's revelation plan? This is how powerful this stuff is. Because why? How, how can we know this? Because God has, a, God has a harvest model. There's the first fruits that goes to him. There's the great multitude, the majority of the harvest that comes after. And then you've got the corners and gleaning. It's like Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Pre, mid, and post. Pre is the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Mid is the great multitude rapture. And post is a small group of the house of Judah who will be left corners and glean. Pre, mid, post. Third heaven, paradise, the city when he returns. It's all there. It's incredible. It is so absolutely incredible. I promise you it'll be worth all of the time that you take, just as everybody else did here, and they freaked out when they began to understand it. See, it's only minus two right now. Do you guys realize that starting tomorrow here in Calgary, you see this minus two Celsius? It's going to drop 20 degrees Celsius. It's going to be like minus 22 to like minus 26 for the next five days. So, <laughs> so as a little joking side note, believe me, I would love for it to be day one of Hanukkah instead of at the time of the circuit of the sun. And brothers and sisters, it may very well be because you all know that this connection has a 50 day count. And that 50 day count only, oops, give me a second here. That 50 day count only lines up exactly to the new year of trees from day one of Hanukkah. All right. So it is extremely high watch and the greatest of all high watches in human history in this period of time right here. And now you're going to see it. You're going to comprehend it. You're going to understand it for yourselves. If you are new, you are going to see this. Okay. It's a big deal. You may not fully grasp it because you don't understand maybe who the Gospels are speaking to and so forth yet and the revelation of the 14 years. But watch this right here. You guys know this. We've been talking about this for a long time, right? This was a huge revelation like four years ago. And what is it? Sorry, I adjusted my heater in here. And so now I'm going to put my jacket back on. Because I am in my little shack inside <laughs> my garage as you guys know. So let's read Psalms 90 and 10. Remember, you're going to want to remember all of this as I'm leading you first into this connection in the Apocrypha that's going to confirm everything we've been teaching about the count of the years and the timing of it. It is going to blow your mind. And then from there, we're going to go into something that that uh, our brother Earl caused me to go into. He, he looked up a word in Luke's discourse in Luke 21 and saw that it was only used one time and, and the root of what it meant. And I was like, what? And I just kept going and going and going. And now we've got a video based on that as well. So we're going to go right through all this tonight. So listen to this. You guys are going to love it. <clears throat> Psalms 90 and 10, the days of our years are three score and 10 years. That means 70. And if by reason of strength, meaning if the people are strong enough to survive past 70 years old, um, and if by, uh, uh, by reason of strength, they be 80. So if they're strong enough to survive till 80 years, which is 10, yet is their strength Labor, look at that. Toil, pain, sorrow, travail, trouble. Look at that. Wickedness. Okay? Wickedness, misery. Do you know why? It's tribulation. It's prophetic in it for tribulation. And listen to what it says. Labor and sorrow. Look at sorrow. There it is again. Affliction, sorrow, 
trouble. There it is again. Wickedness. All of this is what? Tribulation. And then it says, for it is soon, which means a short period of time, I believe is approximately six months, cut off. So that would be 10 years, about six months. And then it says, cut off and we fly away. This we have shown many, many times. This is directly related to uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, when they fly away on the wings of an eagle into the wilderness. That is Matthew's portion. That is Matthew's discourse at the abomination of desolation. Okay? That is ten and a half years into tribulation. Seven years of seals are done and about three and a half years of trumpets this flying away this cutting off is when satan is cast down at mid trumpets about ten and a half years in and how long do they fly away for time and times and half a time which is three and a half years this revelation is the 14 year revelation in one verse all right but what you're going to see here and this is what i was getting at earlier when I when I heard about this and I went to read that portion of the Apocrypha, which is the Book of Jubilees in this portion, I stopped there. And I was preparing the video all around it and everything else. Well, wouldn't you know, 10 minutes before starting this video, I continue to read and I continue to read. And wouldn't you know it, this very thing was spoken about next. But when you read it, and when Ken Johnson was reading these things, you see, Ken Johnson, this video was about a year before, a year ago, and he doesn't have understanding of the season and time, right? Why would you when you read something of about 74, 75 years, and then it goes on to talk about 70? Doesn't really make sense, does it? It makes no sense reading that it would be about 70, 75 years, and that at that time when they're 70 years old, you're like, okay, whatever. And you just keep reading through. But when you have the revelation, when you understand these things, it is crystal clear. And you're going to see it in the book of Jubilees again. Because what do we know, brothers and sisters, about these 70 years? We know it's not really 70, but about 74, 75. Remember what we were talking about at the beginning when Israel came into the land, right? It was in May, May 14th, 1948. That means right now we're about 74 and a half years in. That puts us in the 75th year, right? Day one after 74 is complete puts us in the 75th year. But the Lord God, he's not counting from there. He's not counting from Passover. He's not counting from the summer solstice. He's not come counting from tabernacles. He's not even counting from the circuit of the sun. You see, he's counting from something very specific that he literally told them. When that day comes, 70 years in the Lord God's eyes are complete. Okay, I want you to remember this. Those that have been around for a while, I know you get this, but I want you to really understand this. It'll be 70 years complete in the Lord God's eyes at the time frame, as you know, at the end of 50 days, at the time frame of the new year of trees, right? When the almond blossom opens. So whether it's exactly February 6th, or whether it's it's going to be connected to the circuit of the sun and maybe there's a three-day difference, whatever. The 50-day count is going to begin in December between the 18th, 19th to the 20th, 21st. And again, depending what side of the world you live on. And when the 50 days are over in the early part of February and those 50 days are up to the Lord God, 70 years will be complete. You see, 70 to 80 is 10 years. You don't say 70. You say 71. 
Well, 71, the day one of 71st year begins as soon as the year 70 is complete. People might say, oh, that's 70 years in one day. Yeah, but that first day is the beginning of the 71st year. One year later, 365 days later, is the completion of that fifth year, that 75th year, you see? Or I should say that 71st year in, in what we're talking about here. All right? That's how it works. It's We've been confused all this time, right? I turned 50 in November, so I would say I'm like, what, 50 in a, a month and a half. I'm 50 years old plus a, a month and a half. You see? So all year I would say, oh, I'm 50, I'm 50, I'm 50. But really, I'm in my 51st. Okay? It sounds so simple. But I promise you, you have no idea how much confusion that has brought so many people thinking everything is a year off or a year before or a year after. It's very simple. So 70 years in the Lord God's eyes will end, as you know, at the new year of trees. Let's go to Leviticus 19. I'm all leading up to something, guys. I want to make sure it is grasped and understood. Leviticus 19, 23 through 24, or even 25. And when you shall come into the land. When did Israel come into the land? We all know they came into the land in 1948. Okay? They came into the land in 1948. But when they came into the land, they didn't actually call it year one of a new Shemitah cycle. For years, I had no idea. I thought it was just year one of a Shemitah cycle. I thought they were just starting anew when they got into the land, which would have been, you know, 2017, 18, would have been 70 years complete, right? Just like everybody said, ah, oh, it was the 70th year. You know, it's the 10th Shemitah. No, it wasn't. Because when they came into the land, as you guys know, they said there was four years left in a Shemitah cycle. So 48, 49, 49, 50, 50, 51, 51, 52. So the first Shemitah was the fourth year after they were in the land. Which means the new Shemitah cycle didn't begin till 1952 to 1953. Well, guess what? 1952 to 1950, uh, sorry, 1952 as the beginning of year one until 2022 is what? 70 years complete in the new Shemitah cycle year count. But in reality, they were already there for four years before. So that's why in May of 2022, they completed four years of that first cycle plus 70 years on May 14th. Or they, I think they would, like I said, do IR5 because that's what May 14th was in 1948. So it's 74 years complete. And so from that time, that now makes us in the 75th year. But I just showed you that the end of days are 14 years, and they will begin when 70 years are accomplished. But you see, it will be when 70 years are accomplished. But you have to understand, as I said, we know the Lord God isn't counting from all of these other places that people think he's counting from for his year. And how can we prove it? Psalms, uh, sorry, Leviticus 19, 23 through 24. When you come into the land, May 14th, 1948. Is that when he says there begins count, that he's counting this, this, this count? No, because look at what it says next. And shall have planted all manner of trees. Do you know when they came into the land in May 1948, 
they didn't just start randomly planting all manner of trees. They plant the manner of trees. They planted these trees at a specific time that they still observe every year and have for a long, long time. And it's called Tuba Shavat, the new year of trees. And why is Tuba Shavat observed at this time? Because it's connected to the almond branch, to the almond tree, to the almond bud, to the almond itself. And it all starts when it blossoms. And it blossoms, give or take, either late, late January into February. It's generally always in February. And that's why I say as much as the day one of Hanukkah equals exactly 50 days to the new year of trees, is it exactly that? Or maybe it's three days later in its connection to the circuit of the sun, right? That's why we're saying we know it's 50. It's either going to be exact on their calendar or it's going to be exact on God's calendar. Okay? We know it's one of these two. And how can we understand this and what we're talking about? Because this right here, being the 50th day, would be when um, when the Holy Ghost comes as the what we call Acts 2.0 and will anoint the disciples who were following the Lord for 40 days, which is going to happen as the Son of Man is going to be here for 40 days. And then what happens? Bam! Jerusalem will be attacked and destroyed after they have received the anointing of the Holy Ghost and they go out from Jerusalem right away. Jerusalem will have been surrounded and will be attacked. When that attack happens, it will begin the 14 years. You see? So when does the 14 years begin? Well, it seems like it's in after the 74, right? So between 74 and 75, from when they came into the land. You get that? It seems like from when they came into the land, as it says here, okay, it would seem that it's 74, 75 years. <coughs> right? But at the same time, it's also 70 coming to an end. And we get the understanding of it being 70 of Psalms 90 and 10 in the explanation right here in Leviticus. When you shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees. That would have been February-ish, whatever it was, in 1949. Okay? For food, then shall you count the fruit thereof uncircumcised three years. So for three years. So that was 49 into 50. 50 into 51, 51 into 52. Hello. Okay. 51 into 52. What do you get? Uncircumcised. They couldn't take from it. And then what does it say? In the fourth year. You see, why is it in the fourth year? Because it's when they came into the land and then shall have planted all manner of trees. Meaning, it's not as soon as they came in, but it's at some point of the year when they do it. Well, there's literally a specific day for when they did. When it's recognized. And that's why he says, and in the fourth year from when they came into the land. And what do we know about this four years when they came into the land? There was three, and then the fourth year, was the Shemitah, the seventh year rest cycle. And then from 1952 to 1953 began year one from where the Lord God counts. But to them, it's it's like what? Uh, nine, ten months into the year or whatever, right? So this is telling us that it will be in the fourth, right? That fourth to the time of the fifth. It's it, But it's the fourth, right? The end of the fourth coming. But to the Jews, it's four is complete and it's in the 75th. So between 74 and 75. But to the Lord God, it's 70. Why? Because when they came into the land, there was still a cycle of four years. 
So plant those trees. It's uncircumcised. The fourth year you give it to me, and then from there forward, it's yours to take from. That's why this year, it was the 70th year or the 10th Shemitah from 5253. Which means in, in our reality of looking at things and in the Jews in the land, it's 74 years. And in that time frame is between 74 and 75. But to the Lord God, counting from the new year of trees, it's 74 having been complete, but it's not until the fifth year that it becomes theirs. So 74, we would still be in the 74th counting from a year's end, which is the new year of trees. Okay, that is one of the four new years of the Lord uh, um, uh, on the Hebrew calendar. So the Lord God is counting from the new year of trees. So from the fifth year, well, when does the fifth year begin? Well, according to here, it's going to begin on February 7th. February 7th will be day one of the 75th year. And what did it say? From this time forward, it's theirs to take from, right? Because it was five years, right? In the fifth year, they started to take from it. So that began in 1952, the day after the New Year of Trees in 1952, when four was accomplished, it was now theirs to begin counting from. And 52 New Year of Trees to 53, or day after New Year of Trees, to 53, 1953 New Year of Trees was their fifth year. But you see, why does it say in? Because it's when they came into the land. So to the Lord God, it's exact counting because he's calling that his year's end. But to them, it would be from when they came in the year, so it would be in the midst of their year, which puts this new year of trees between the 74th and 75th year. Make sure you remember that because it's going to be very, very important. All right. It is so awesome when you see what we're going to show in these connections. See here, like I was saying, I was going to bring this up. Anybody that wants to see the end time code, this is the video. It's We've talked about it in many things. And what happens is we've known it for a long time, actually. But it was confirmed, um, actually, yeah, a little over two and a half years ago, right? You guys all know the story. It was confirmed on March 10th into the 11th of 2020, right at the time when the pandemic was declared, right? This was a recap, breaking it all down in this video, showing the revelation that it was 50 days, which is Luke's discourse, then seven and seven, which is the 14 years of tribulation, which is Mark and Matthew, and when it's all done, it's the final jubilee when all the tribes will receive their land. They'll all be brought back. Brothers shall dwell with brother in peace. Right? Peace will have returned. They will all be given their land dwelling together and the millennial reign will begin. That is the revelation of the end of days. It is 50 days, 14 years, and the 50th jubilee. And this came about <clears throat> because of, uh, of understanding that we'd really been digging into and understanding in Zechariah. And in Zechariah, it was about the attack in the fifth month and the attack on the seventh month. And for the longest time, it hadn't dawned on me that it was exactly 50 days apart. And so we had been looking, then I had continued to look into search and believed as we followed this progress over the years, this procession, that this is why we were looking less at other event timeframes because in the fifth and seventh month, 
related to this attack that was 50 days apart. First attack, second attack. And then it wasn't until the recent couple or so months that <clears throat> the clarity was revealed that the Lord wasn't showing that to tell us that it was the fifth and the seventh month that it would happen, but it was to reveal that there were 50 days between attack one and attack two. But it wasn't connected to both attacks being on Jerusalem like those were representing. And the only other place that revealed itself that had 50 days from event to event was at the time last year, at about this time, maybe a little bit earlier, where we had realized that day one of Hanukkah, exactly 50 days later, is the new year of trees. You see, you can even see some of this right here. And what that represented was what we understood was the Lord coming, anointing the apostles, the escape of the bride of Christ, um, the, the wedding feast that would take place. He would then return, get uh, gather the those who would be the disciples who are going to work, follow him for 40 days as he's doing these miracles and wonders while the world is rejecting him, thinking he's the Antichrist. <clears throat> then he leaves. This group will also then receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost like the apostles did. They will then go out from Jerusalem and begin their mission. And the second attack on Jerusalem would take place. And that's what we've talked about a lot lately in relation to Isaiah chapter 9, which is so crystal clear for us. Because you're going to see that it, we're going to touch things that cover chapters to years in part. We're going to touch things that talk on Luke in order in part. We're going to be in the prophets. We're going to be in the law. It's amazing. All these things, guys, that we've understood that are all connected to this time. Look at this. <clears throat> In <clears throat> Revelation chapter 6, you see? It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? In Revelation chapter 6, look at what it says. Revelation chapter 6, not the white horse rider. We know. The, right, the white horse rider is the son of man here for 40 days. No doubt about it. All right? But the red horse rider, listen to what it says. Power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace. To take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. When is peace removed? While the Son of Man is here warning as Jonah for 40 days? No. Don't you think peace is removed after the Holy Ghost anoints that group and then leaves? Hello. That's exactly what happens. This is, this is the beginning of the 14 years. When that peace is gone, poof! The 14 years begins. And this first they shall kill one another with this great sword will begin at Jerusalem when Syria invades. There's a compassing about and an attack. Okay, so what do we have? When peace is removed and it's nation against nation that they'll kill each other. So we can see that this happens at the red horse rider, not the white horse rider. How about this? We all know Zechariah very well. 14 years, 14 chapters are represented in it, as you guys all know. <clears throat> Look what happens. Look what happens. Look what happens. When are you not going to have mercy upon the land? These 70 years. Well, you know what's crazy about that? It's not really 70 years as we just explained. You see, to the Lord God, it will be the end of 70 years. But to the Jews, this is why the world doesn't understand this. This is why somebody as, as brilliant as seeking these things out as Ken Johnson is, didn't dawn to him. It never dawned on him when reading it, and he still thinks there might be 50 years left. Because if you don't understand 70, 
you're thinking it's already passed and so you don't even want to look at it but when you see and understand that the revelation is that 74 in the midst of 74 to 75 years from when they came into the land and you realize from where the lord god is counting and there was four years and then 70 starts when it's for them well then where does that put you that puts us as we're speaking these 70 years god is jealous for zion with a great jealousy that even that were at ease and they what helped forward the affliction boom tribulation is starting and what happens when you get to chapter 8 check this out here it is watch this listen to what he says to them in verse 10. this is now the lord has returned on heavenly mount zion right you guys all know this he's no longer jealous he's now returned it's the mountain of the lord they came down on heavenly mount zion with paradise at the end of seals and look at what verse 10 says he tells them let their hands be strong because now they're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets on the in the temple and look at what it says in verse 10 for before these days right the beginning of tribulation back in these 70 years there was no hire for man nor hire nor any hire for beast neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction so you've got no peace you've got tribulation that began for i set all men every one against his neighbor it's the exact same wording from the red horse rider and connected directly to chapter one of zachariah as well telling you that's why for seven years you couldn't do it and now at the time of the eighth year now it's time to do these things you see it's all right there so there was no peace the affliction had started and that was the time when he set neighbor against neighbor that's when he brought about the sword the great sword you see it's the same thing it's connected like this everywhere as we read through it well if you remember this look at what luke 21 says in luke 21 in his discourse we have some very very important things i'm going to show you two things actually before we get to it because you see in luke 21 where am i in verse 10 he uses black letters it's like he overhears a conversation he says then said he unto them what does he mean by inserting this why are these these black letters being inserted before the answer is because in the prophetic he's talking about events that are going to come upon matthew and mark's time not upon this group being spoken about during this 40 50 day period during the time of luke's discourse so he says then he said then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom what is that that is the red horse rider and we can prove it all up more because in verse 12 it says but before all these well what's before the red horse rider the white horse rider the white horse rider in a period of time the pre-trib the 40 days of the son of man events taking place that's still going to be chaotic but not the official beginning of the 14 years when nation against nation starts this is going to be the warning time and look at what happens when we get down here watch this listen to this in luke 21 29 do you know that this is only you guys many of you guys already know this right this is only spoken about like this in luke in relation to the parable of the fig tree and then and he spake to them a parable he jumps in with black letter words again do you know why because he's talking to mark and matthew he's letting luke's group of workers understand these things and what does it say behold the fig tree and all the trees 
Leviticus 19, the whole story was about all the trees. He's telling you it's connected to where he's counting from at the time of the new year of trees, at the time of the almond blossom. When that begins, that is the warning. That's the beginning. That's when it all starts. That'll be the attack. You see how he speaks black letters? And you see where he spoke black letters up here? Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. When does the nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom start? Where this is spoken about at the new year of trees. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It's exactly where it is. Well, watch this. So when we see this and we see this, um, uh, where was I? Give me a second. We see this that was connected in relation to peace, right? When nation against nation, there it was, right? That we spoke about nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay. Jerusalem being surrounded about, but the tribulation will begin to them when it's nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. That is the definition of the red horse rider when peace is removed. And only Luke's talks about these things here coming first. So what happens? How can you even prove this? Well, if Luke's talks about these things that come before these things, then when do these things literally begin? To get that answer, go to Mark's discourse. In Mark's discourse, there's no black letter words. There's no jumping into saying these things are happening to other people. It starts right off in verse 8 by saying, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Goes into all these things, okay? And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. And there shall be famines and troubles, which means a roiling of water, by the way. A roiling of water, a disturbance of water, a trouble of water. Hello. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Pain, sorrow, travail, tribulation. These are the beginning. It's only the start, the commencement. What was? Nation against nation and all these things. And what are they? All of these things being listed here are called the beginnings of what? Joy, peace, harmony? No. Nope. Peace is gone. Nation against nation begins at Jerusalem at that 50th day time after the Holy Ghost is gone and they have left from Jerusalem to preach. And what starts? Sorrow, pain, travail. What period of time is this? Well, according to what the Lord God told us, when you go back on his clock and realize that it'll be the end of 70 in his count, whoops, Psalms 90 and 10, and go back to his count, what does it say? The days of our years are three score and 10, 70. And if you can survive to 80, your strength is what? Labor and sorrow. It's labor, sorrow, pain, travail, wickedness, peace is removed. You guys get it, right? All of this is at the period of time when the 14 years begin. And everything I just showed was connected to all the trees is connected to where the Lord God is counting from, which means to him when he began to allow it to be for them, it will be 70 years completed that he had allowed it to be theirs from the new year of trees. Not from when they came into the land, not from Passover or, or tabernacles or any of those things but from when he allowed it to begin to be theirs 
70 years will be done and day one starts the 14 years of tribulation that date if we stuck just with what's directly on the calendar in the 50-day count if that was where the almond tree blossomed at the new year of trees that day that following day that time right there that period is when jerusalem will be attacked by syria in 2023 and remember it's actually from when they came into the land between the 74th and 75th year and it's crystal clear to understand because he said from when they came into the land you see so it's not day one when they came into the land but from when they shall have planted after they've been in the land and there's only one specific date for the trees for all manner of trees luke 21. are you ready for this check this out this is from the book of jubilees i believe it's chapter 23 and you're going to see when when i show it ken goes into a bunch of things uh in relation to um understanding the essenes and the essenes were a group of people that lived to like i think 120 years old so they ate better when others weren't properly eating they intermittent fasted he said but they also had uh herbs and things and and these remedies that they knew of uh, um uh, natural ones obviously that helped them along the way as well so it was very interesting conversation and i'm watching another video of his right now i haven't watched it all yet but this one right here just so you guys if you want to know essenes beliefs overview he shows the sadducees the pharisees and the essenes and he believes that the true most likely the truest jews were actually the essenes because of their beliefs what they understood what they were watching for and guess what well the sadducees were really off and it was social issues and the pharisees it was a little bit better but they were clearly off and there was about you know a chunk that that brought in their own explanation of things in doctrine kind of threw them off a bit the essenes were the only ones that were the the unbelievable understanding of closeness in relation to being directly related to scripture and what was their focus prophecy a group of people separated from the church and the teachings and the ways of their laws and doing all these things and their focus was on prophecies for a group that separated themselves from the quote unquote known church at the time pretty awesome pretty awesome right so now check this out we're gonna see uh where is that video of his we're gonna watch this one here and it's only gonna be a minute but this is what he's talking about he's talking about the ages and and how long people lived and everything else and it's about abraham it says uh, in in the beginning here it says, but Abraham was perfect in his deeds with the Lord and well-pleasing in righteousness. There it is, you see? Of course we can be righteous in the Lord. All the days of his life, and behold, he did not complete four jubilees. Meaning, excuse me, meaning what Ken explains is he, he should have been able to complete 200 years, but we know he only lived to what, 170 or 175? I think 170. And the reason for it was on account of the wickedness that was in the world, in the land in those days. So he couldn't keep doing everything the way he wanted to do. And while he was in certain areas and so forth, probably dealing with nutrition and other things. That's what Ken goes on to explain. Then it gets awesome. It gets incredibly awesome. Verse uh, uh, 2310 in the book of Jubilees. And all the generations that rise from then and unto the day of the great judgment and unto the day of the great judgment age die speedily before completing two jubilees so in the final age in that generation of the end when the judgment age is upon them 
they won't even complete two jubilees meaning they won't complete a hundred years and it will be since their knowledge leaves them on account of their old age and ken goes on to talk about you know dementia that happens in this day and age right uh on account of their old age that also all their knowledge ceases are you ready for this this freaked me out and i didn't even read past this until 10 minutes before the video after i had preset everything that i knew i was going to talk about that i just shared with you and 10 minutes before i started the video i went to the rest of it listen to this and on that day what day the age of judgment when the time has now come in that final generation and on that day if a man lives are you ready for this a jubilee and a half a jubilee is 50 years and a half is 25 years they shall say concerning him he has lived long and the mass of his days this is when my jaw hit the floor are sufferings and pain and trouble and no peace sound familiar and on that day <laughs> if a man lives to 75 years 74 to 75 years they shall say concerning him he has lived long in the mass of his days the completion of his days are what suffering pain trouble and no peace sound familiar affliction trouble sorrow wickedness pain travail sorrow sound familiar no peace sound familiar do you see why i wanted to lead you into it to make sure you grasped what i was showing before we got there well it gets better because this is saying you can understand why i let it in the way i did and why it was so important to do it because we know that to the lord god we just showed it was the end of 70. But to them in the land, it will be 74 to 75 years. And what did it say to them in the land? 75 years, which is actually 74 to 75 years. And then the mass of their time would be suffering, pain, trouble, no peace. For punishment follows upon punishment hostility upon hostility trouble upon trouble wickedness upon wickedness every single point and more to what we said happens what at the end of 70 which is 74 to 75 years them in the land ponder that for a moment and i'm going to prove it to you even more because listen to what it continues to say wickedness upon wickedness sickness upon sickness right plagues and all evil judgments of all kind it goes on with some more of them becoming stiff and sterility and death and sword and captivity and all the punishments and sufferings i mean that's a little over the top isn't it <laughs> i would have thought after wickedness upon wickedness okay that's enough uh, we get it we get it it's going to be an absolutely horrific time for the mass of their days after that okay we get it because when i read this i was like oh my goodness this is the revelation that we've been teaching here in this ministry of the Lord's end of 70 
at the time when Israel will be between 74 and 75 for when they came in the land. That's why as I read this, I was freaking out. I went in and I told my wife, because why? It's Psalms 90 and 10 and Leviticus 19 combined together. But remember what I said? I hadn't read the rest of this. I had only read this. I hadn't read the rest of it until 10 minutes before doing the video for which I had already planned Psalms 90 and 10 and Leviticus 19 to break it all down in this for you. And 10 minutes before I read it, look at what I came to. And all the punishments and sufferings, all this comes in the evil generation. Well, how about that? Do we know something about an evil and wicked generation that the Lord is warning? Is that possible? How about the story of Jonah? Who is the son of man? He's going to be as Jonah was, <clears throat> which was what? A warning for 40 days. He never fulfilled this yet. And what does it say starting in verse 29? And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation they seek a sign and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of jonah the prophet do you remember we covered this in john chapter 7 the exact period of time that is connected to when the lord comes in the midst of the jews feast of tabernacles and only this year for a 10-year period does it happen when the circuit of the sun is in the midst of it when he showed up <clears throat> and what does it say in john chapter 7 they accused him of saying no prophet has come out of galilee but in reality the prophet who came out of galilee was jonah and jesus showing up at that time was the prophet as Jonah was from Galilee. Do you see how important this connection was in the revelation of John 7? When is this taking place? At the time of the evil generation. What's this time? All this comes in the evil generation. Proof positive that this is the year count and the day and age but we've also proven that to the lord it's 70. remember <coughs> i hadn't read this part here that we're going into until 10 minutes before the video and what does it say all this comes in the evil generation which sins upon the earth with the uncleanness and fornic of fornication and defilement and the abomination uh, of their deeds. And listen to this, here it comes. And then they will say, the days of the fathers were many, even to 1,000 years and were good. And behold, the days of our lives, if a man has lived many, are 70 years and if he is strong 80 years and all were evil and no peace will be in this evil generation what's the revelation that we have been teaching here for what two years now two years and change that the 74th to 75th year from when they come into the land is the same as saying 70 years coming to an end and the only way to understand it is to know that the lord god himself told us that the connection to this period and time would be connected to all 
the trees. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Now, look at this clarity. This is awesome. Do you understand what this is telling us? This is telling us the exact same thing we have revealed in the revelation of understanding scripture for the last several years. Not found in apocryphas, but proven out even more. The, excuse me, the very thing, the very thing that we've been teaching spelling it out for us right here <laughs> this is so awesome do you guys know what it means take a deep breath pause the video if you need to and understand what it means understand what this means are we not from when israel came into the land in the 74th to 75th year are we not then based on the shemitahs and the count of leviticus and the lord saying from all the trees are we not then Truly in the 70th year for the new year of trees. We are 100%. 100%. This period of time right here. If the book of Jubilees has any truth to it, for which we have first proven for a few years, couple of years now, from Scripture, in the revelation through the leading of the Holy Ghost. If Jubilees has any bit of truth to it, which we have just proven it does from Scripture that we'd already understood, absorb what I'm telling you right here and right now. Absorb it, ponder it, and I would even say this. I don't even believe you need a thus saith the Lord anymore. I don't believe I need to receive a thus saith the Lord. This has spoken the exact words of the revelation of Scripture. And in all of history, from the time these words were written, that's right, not even in Christ's time, not even in Christ's time, because the temple was around for 300 and some years. At no point in thousands of years, could this have taken place except from when Israel came back into the land? And in no other year, no other year in human history Will the 74 to 75 and 70 be at any other time than from the time you're hearing right now? Freaked out yet? You freaked out? Freaked out with joy? and excitement knowing that I'm speaking to you right here December 16th 2022 
and depending where you live on the world, it's the evening of the 18th to the evening of the 21st. Are you ready? Are you watching? Are you diligently seeking and searching the Lord? Do you want to be as as Noah uh, as Jonah was? I'm uh, sorry, sir. Do you want to be as Enoch was? Would you like to be as Enoch was? If you want to be like Enoch was, and not taste of death. then maybe you should do as Enoch did. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Who is this group? They're the same ones from Luke 21. Who are these diligently seeking that are going to be rewarded not having tasted of death? This group is only found in Luke 21. While the world is caught up in the cares of this world, they're not going to see that day coming. They're going to be caught unawares. It'll be as a snare upon the entire earth. And so he warns this group. He tells the people, Watch ye therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You see, Luke's portion says nothing about the day and the hour. You see that? So what are you supposed to miss? Everything that he discussed. You're even going to miss, but before all these. This isn't even for the, the escape group that goes pre-trib. This is the conversation for those who are going to be with them for the 40 days, who are going to follow him, who are going to warn as he warns. They're, going, they're the watchmen who will be chosen, what we call the disciples. The Luke 24 group, a group that will be at least here with them for 40 and then during seals. Why do you think hands are going to be laid on them and they're going to be delivered up into synagogues and into prisons? Something biblical is going to be taking place in Jerusalem because they're doing this what? during the 40 days of the Son of Man. This is really a discussion about the 40-day period. This is the group of the end-time churches that relates to Smyrna, which is some of them that shall be caused to be put to death. But don't fear. Not a hair of your head is going to be touched. You see? And when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, this is the second attack. This is the Isaiah 9. You see, Isaiah 9 said the, 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 the child will be born. He's going to bring light into the darkness. That's because the first attack takes place in northern Israel. The Lord will then show up. And then what? The 40 days begin. And what are these guys going to be doing? Well, I believe they're going to be doing something. There's got to be some sort of warning. There's got to be something going on because these people. Some of them are going to be caused to be put to death. What on earth will have happened to cause these people to be brought before rulers, delivered into synagogues and prisons, brought before kings? 
What do you think is going to happen? What, what could possibly be taking place? Do you think repent and turn? Crying out that Jerusalem is going to be compassed about? When you see yourselves being surrounded, flee! It's time to go. Run! Hello. You see, this is a warning before it happens. It's a warning. That's what the 40 days are. They are a warning. And it says in Luke 21, 20, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. You see, when you see it compassed with armies, then you had better flee. You see, why weren't these things fulfilled in the past when they were looking at them like we taught in the last video? It was the teacher of righteousness that would bring about the understanding. But if they were previous teachers of righteousness, then how come the Lord never showed up? Because it wasn't the end of days. It wasn't yet the 70 and 5. The 74, 75. It wasn't the, the end of 70 coming. You see? This time, it is. Let me show you this clip from Ken Johnson. Just to bring the point home. It's just one minute. Not what we're talking about. That's kind of normal. In this case, one of the signs is that we have this very strange, complete memory loss. And if we're close to the rapture, second coming deal, and this is getting close to our time period, it sounds like Alzheimer's. And that's what I have written in here. But like I was telling you earlier. This is interesting. And in those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half, so 50 and a half, it'd be 74, 75. If you make it to 74 <laughs> at that point, they will say regarding him, he's lived long. Did you hear that? Did you hear how he said it? It's 50, a jubilee and a half. It's 70, 74, 75. And then what did he say? Change, complete memory loss. And if we're close to the rapture, second coming deal, and this is getting close to our time period, it sounds like Alzheimer's. And that's what I have written in here. But let's go on with this. This is interesting. And in those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half, so 50 and a half, it'd be 74, 75. If you make it to 74 at that point, they will say regarding him. You see that? And then he said, so he said 74, 75, and then went on to say, let me bring this back down. And then went on to say, having lived 74 years. But he doesn't yet get it. And that's okay. He's got incredible understanding of these things. But you see, when people share on these things, we'll catch these nuggets if we're watching, right? This was the mother load nugget. This was the revelation of where we are right now as I'm speaking to you. And when this begins and this group is taken out, we know a group, are you ready for this? Will be given understanding. We'll know that this time that they've been preparing for is coming. I've looked up some more stuff of the teacher of righteousness that people have sent me. It would blow your mind. It would freak you guys out. Preparation for the end with the revelation of the prophets that the prophets themselves never even understood. That's what's happening here, guys, for five years. Well, now look at this. Okay? This is that group that's going to work. This is that group during the 40 days at least. And what are they doing? Do you think the chances of them surrounding Jerusalem to some extent, in some capacity, giving out warning? Right? Surrounding Judah even in major areas and going about warning of the compassing that's about to take place? I think it's probably more than just armies. It's probably going to relate to a group of people. And this is what our brother um, uh, Earl had shared when he looked into this. 
he had shared this one piece and then you know when you it's like a dog on a bow man you find something and we just want to dig 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 right and i'm going to go into some of that now because this is that period of time what i'm talking about right here <clears throat> do you do you realize that this right here that i'm talking about is going to begin before the end of december 2022 hello do you think it's because i'm saying it or do you think because we we've been showing the revelation of scripture we just saw the precise revelation that we've been teaching spoken exactly in the wording from jubilees exactly this will begin in december 2022 after the escape and before the red horse rider of nation against nation so what is a reason that these guys are being persecuted and attacked and brought to synagogues and prisons some of them being put to death well remember the pharisees the sadducees right some of them thinking these people are crazy there's no way that's not messiah blah you know time isn't coming we're not going to be destroyed we're so strong in our armies we can defeat anybody that comes against us even though northern israel was already attacked right well check this out luke 21 20 and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, check it out. It's used one time. It means a body of troops or an army. So in part, absolutely. We know Syria and those with Syria are the ones that are coming to bring about this destruction and attack in Jerusalem and Judah. It's happening. And it's going to happen in February of 2023. This word here represents just ground, all right? Like, like a body of troops, you know, being on the ground. But it comes from the base of body of troops. Check this out. It comes from the base, 50, uh, 4756, and it's only used two times. Check this out. It can be an army, right? From the base uh, as encamped. But listen to this. Camp likeness, that is an army. That is figuratively the angels, the celestial luminaries. What the? Do, is this going to be celestial luminaries? Is there more than one surrounding? Because you see, this one is clearly an actual army an actual compassing about for an attack that will happen on day 50 or at the end of the 50th day. Of that, there's no question. However, what's the reason for these guys being delivered up into prisons and some of them being killed along those 40 days? Do you think maybe there's a connection to maybe them surrounding? Do you think that's possible? Well, here's where that question comes from. A lot of you guys will like this, <clears throat> who believe or maybe understand their workers. Because we spoke about this in recent videos in Jeremiah chapter 4. In Jeremiah chapter 4, we know this destruction is coming from the north, right? We know it's the lion who is Assad, and the first attack is coming to Jerusalem. Well, what happens in jeremiah 4 verse 15 it says a voice declares from dan and publishes affliction from mount ephraim make ye mention behold publish against jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of judah as keepers of a field they uh, are they against her round about because she hath been rebellious against me, saith the Lord. This is the exact same period of time as Luke chapter 21. 
the exact same period of time. Well, look at the word here for watchers. The word for watchers isn't the ones that are attacking. It's, it's a type of guard, a type of protecting. See, it could be good or bad. You see, there's a besieged, but there's also what? A hidden thing. Something to do with watchmen. A, a, a hidden group that we've spoken about, which is connected to 1 Peter chapter 1, of that hidden group that has a place reserved for them in heaven. A group that that no longer needs faith because they're in the presence of the Lord. There is no need for faith once you know. Once you're literally in the presence and you're aware, you're walking with them. You understand the Bible defines that as no need for faith. You see? So if you fall after that, you're in big trouble, right? These guys don't fall. These guys know that they know. And they freak out, as we know, from reading 1 Peter 1. So you have a group of watchers who are gone about calling out as a group of hidden ones who are on guard, protecting and, and declaring. Isn't that exactly what we were reading in Luke chapter 21? Wouldn't that be a highly probable reason of those being brought into synagogues and prisons and before judges and some of them being killed for going around and declaring these things and trying to get the people to wake up and flee? Well, this word for watchers, there's, there's two components to this. There's the Greek, right, the New Testament, and there's the Hebrew in relation to what Jeremiah is talking about. Well, look what happens. What if we go, let's go into, well, you know what? Let me show you what happens in Luke's first. There it is in Luke. But it comes, remember, we're going to that root word of it, which is like angels, right? A host of angels, celestial luminaries. Remember what it was connected to. This was connected to Luke 21. While a company of army, of armies are literally compassing them. However, the root of this has a definition as a troop of angels. A troop of angels, you see? Like the stars of heaven, heavenly bodies. That are connected to the time frame of the beginning of the 40 days as a group of people who are watchers giving out the warning during the 40 days with the Son of Man. Well, remember when I said that not only will we see a little glimpse of more chapters to years understanding, but we would also see Luke in order for those that understand. It's Luke chapter 1 connects to the escape. Luke chapter 2 is the 40 days of the Son of Man connected to the typology of his birth which is exactly what we read about in, in Isaiah 9. And Luke chapter 3 is when he returns at the end of the sixth seal. And Luke chapter 4 is when he returns at the end of trumpets. Okay, that is the revelation of Luke in order. So if there's a connection to a group of luminary watchmen or watchers may be assisted by these luminaries, by these angels, it would have to be connected to some understanding for us to comprehend that's related to the 40 days. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happens. Exactly what happens. But then there's one more place where it's talked about. And we're going to show that this one is Luke in order. And this one is a chapters to years. They're not at the same time. No, no, no. They're not at the same time. It's a separate thing. But I'm going to show it to you. You see, because we just saw these watchers, these watchers that were connected 
to the exact same ones at the time frame of Luke chapter 21 and those who were being following the Lord for 40 days, those who were prepared for the time of the end, watching, understanding the revelation for the time of the end that Jeremiah calls watchers who are giving out their voice surrounding them. But they're not the ones attacking. Look what happens when we look this up in Jeremiah chapter 4. The word in Jeremiah chapter 4, you see it's guarding, watching, watchmen, right? Keep close. Oh, there it is again. Keep secret. Again, bringing us back to 1 Peter 1. Well, when you go into it, this is where I'm focusing. You see, it just so happens Jeremiah only uses the word twice with watchers and watchmen. Twice. So we've discussed the first one in relation to Jeremiah chapter 4 and being connected exactly to Luke chapter 21. But if we go to Jeremiah 31, let's go see what Jeremiah 31 says. Turns out, lucky for us, we know Jeremiah 31 very well, right? What do we know about Jeremiah 31? This is rapture time. Not pre-trip. This is the mid-trib seventh year of seals great multitude rapture time you know what's interesting is when we get back to the luke one and go in through the luke portion one where it's spoken about twice with that watchman group that army that that celestial angel portion you're gonna see it just so happens to be the 40 days and it just so happens to be the chapters to years, seventh year. You think it's coincidence? I promise you it's not. Look at this, Jeremiah 31, verse 2, starting there. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause them to rest. Well, this is this is past tense, he's saying, right? So what do we know this typology is? Well, we're going to see. We know that this relates to the end of seals. And he's saying, look, there was a time when, when those that were left of the sword, I led them to flee into the wilderness. What do we know about this fleeing into the wilderness in the midst of seals? Well, we know it's directly related to Mark's discourse right here it's mark's abomination of desolation when the antichrist gets his power to continue for 42 months and they're to flee to the wilderness to avoid the mark and the worshiping of the beast and everything else and who gets who's going to be fleeing there who's going to be fleeing to these places of protection during this time of seals at about two and a half years into seals it'll be those who survived the beginnings of sorrows, which was World War III. Hello. So the group that he's talking to in Jeremiah 31 is the group that went through seals, who survived, those that survived through the, the beginning of sorrows, which was World War III and the famine and the disturbances of water and all those things, that he then brought to rest, brought them to places of safety in the wilderness. This is the Moses story, right? This is, we've talked about this. Moses is to seals like uh, Joshua, Yeshua, is to trumpets. And what happens? Jeremiah 31, verse 6. For there shall be a day that the watchman, there it is, you see, it's the same group. This is why I don't believe they're leaving after 40 days. There's maybe inklings here and there, but I don't believe so. Okay? For there shall be a day 
that the watchman upon Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise, right? Arise, let us go up to Zion unto the Lord God. Who is going up to Zion to the Lord God? Psalms 124 or 24. Those who have washed their robes, right? Those who have washed their hands and made themselves clean. Hello. When does he come on heavenly Mount Zion? At the end of the sixth seal. Who's the ones, who are the ones warning? Who are the ones preparing them for that day? Well, isn't it funny that Ephraim shows up? Isn't it funny that in Zach, uh, in Jeremiah 4, it was Dan and Ephraim that were mentioned? Isn't it funny that out of the 144,000, Dan and Ephraim aren't mentioned? Because we've been showing they're the two that represent the 12,000 and 12,000 that will be the seals workers. Hello? This is the direct reference to them twice. And what does it say? Verse 8. For behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth. And with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth together a great company. What does this mean? A great multitude shall return thither. What is this great multitude that he's gathering to the mountain of the Lord? That these guys are telling them to prepare, to get ready, time to go to the mountain of the Lord. Who is this group? When do they go? Well, isn't it interesting? You see, when we were in Mark, we just showed here earlier, right? Those that he then brought into the wilderness. When does he bring them into the wilderness? At the time when Antichrist is about to begin his time, right? Remember, I keep saying about two and a half years because you know when it is. It's at true unleavened bread, the feast of the Lord, right? One of the feasts of the Lord. And the true feast of the Lord is when? At the solstice, the summer solstice. What is the summer solstice? It is the week of unleavened bread, which is Passover. So when they flee, they're fleeing for 42 months at the time of unleavened bread or Passover. And listen to what it says in Mark 13, 18. And pray that your flight be not in winter. Wasn't that awesome? Because you know what happens? We'll use 2023 as an example. It's not going to be 2023. It'll be about two and a half years, right? About two and a half years. Do you know that the solstice, the summer solstice, is the first day of summer? What did he say? Pray that your flight be not in winter. Remember, the Lord God goes summer and winter, summer and winter, summer and winter. No spring, no fall is mentioned. No autumn, summer and winter. What did he say? Pray that your flight be not in winter. When will the flight be? Just after winter at the beginning of summer. Isn't that awesome? That's literally what's talking about right here. That's exactly what's taking place. And it's the exact timing. Listen to this. Do you remember this in... Uh, Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Remember, these are the feasts of the Lord, right? There are three feasts of the Lord. This one is the pre-trib, which is one day, right? It is a one-day event. This Passover is a feast of the Lord, and it is the rapture of the great multitude and it's a seven day feast. This is second place. They go to paradise. They go to the mountain of the Lord. And third is tabernacles or the feast of booths, which is a seven day feast. 
And the eighth, Shmini Aretz, is called the new beginning, which is going to be the time of Jubilee. You see? What's the answer? Well, if you follow them in the year, it looks like seven, one, seven. But if you want to understand them in order, it's one, seven, seven. Hello. And so now we're talking about Passover. So they're going to flee at true Passover unleavened bread, which is the time of the summer solstice. When he, when he brings them into the wilderness, remember Jeremiah 31, all right? So what was shall be. When he brings them into the wilderness, it's those that are left from the sword, right? It's those that were left from the sword during World War III. Okay? And which is called what? Which is called affliction. It's called tribulation. We just saw that in Zechariah chapter 1 and in Zechariah chapter 8. Why they couldn't do anything because of the affliction. He had set every neighbor against himself, against each other. So is it a surprise? <clears throat> when you read in Deuteronomy 16, that Passover, which is the second place portion, is that it was during the time of their affliction? They have unleavened bread, wherewith even the bread of affliction? You see? And, and what happened in the story in Exodus, when did they flee? Huh. They fled at the beginning, which is Taurus. Hello. Taurus is the time of the summer solstice. And what happens? When they fled, it was what? Time of unleavened bread. Huh. Huh. You see? Because this portion of tribulation of seals, it's all tribulation. They flee into the wilderness at about two and a half years into tribulation. And then the typology of when the 40 years of being in the wilderness comes to an end, they're going to be a great company, a great multitude rapture at the time of Passover by this group of watchers who will inform them it's time to go up. How do we know this is actually at Passover? Well, if you remember, it was discovered from one of our sisters that if you go to the Septuagint, the, the first translation of the Hebrew, I think it was to Greek, and you read about it, it's perfect to everything we were revealing. Jeremiah 31, verse 8. Behold, I bring them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover. Hello. And the people shall beget a great multitude, and they shall return thither. You see? The people shall beget. That's the, that's the watchman. And they're going to bring the great multitude in at the time of Passover. But you see, when would be the time of Passover? This is the time frame when they fled. But if, if the Antichrist only has 42 months... That would be to the end of the sixth year of seals. But remember, the great multitude rapture group doesn't just get randomly raptured at an understood time. They don't get raptured till about the sixth, seventh month. Right? Maybe it's, maybe it's Passover. Maybe it's second Passover, right? They don't get raptured till about the middle 
of the seventh year of seals. That's why after, you know, the, the Ezekiel 39 war, they're the bearing bones for seven months. But you see, what would that make it? While they fled at the time of Passover, it was three and a half years later, 42 months, which means it wouldn't be Passover again at the end of six years. It would be at the time of the winter solstice. But yet, we find out that they get to the mountain of the Lord at the time of Passover about six months later, which puts it about the midst of the seventh year. Exactly where we've been showing it the entire time. And what's fascinating for us to understand here in this is that it's the same group of watchmen. The same group of watchmen from Jeremiah chapter 4 that are preparing them to go up. And when they all get there, when it's all time, it's going to be a great multitude at Passover or second Passover. Isn't that awesome? So we have one at the 40 days, and we have the second one in the seventh year of seals at the time of the rapture. We see that the Lord recognized that they were in affliction and then will rescue them. We know that the time is connected to the typology of Moses to the end of seals, and that Moses isn't wasn't allowed at the end of the 40 years which is a typology of the end of the 36 maybe even 40 months at the end of the of the sorry of the 42 months to the end of seals is the same typology of when they were in the wilderness we've taught on it many times but moses couldn't take them over so yeshua joshua shows up hello and he will cross over and bring them over with the watchmen. Remember, the watchmen start by preparing them to go. So we've got Moses. We have, they were in affliction during this time in the wilderness. All right? All of this connected to the time of seals. Well, if we go back into Luke, and we're talking again, this Luke one, where it shows up twice for these luminaries, let's go in to see where we know Luke 21 was talking about it that 40 days. A group warning for 40 days about them being compassed about, yes, by an actual army, but Jeremiah shows us a group of people warning them, and Luke tells us that during this time, some of them are going to be taken prison and brought to magistrates and everything else, which means at about the time that the 40 days begins, this group of workers who will no longer need faith because they will be standing with the Son of Man has a connection to angels? Maybe heavenly luminaries coming down? Well, if we go to Luke in order, look at what we find. Jesus is born. Verse 11, Luke 2, verse 11. For unto you is born this day he's going to be wrapped in swaddled clothes so he was just born this is the day of his birth which will be the beginning of the 40 days of the son of man look at luke 2 verse 13 and suddenly this is the beginning of the 40 days of the son of man and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. There it is. Remember it showed up twice? Isn't that interesting? There is a heavenly, a multitude of heavenly hosts on day one of the 40 days, just as there is a compassing army that's coming 
at the end of 50 days that a group compassing them is warning is coming but this one tells us the connection could be angels well check this out these angels what do they do what happens when this multitude of heavenly hosts shows up they praise right peace right goodwill and peace on earth right because there's still peace right well who are they talking to who does this angel suddenly show up with a heavenly host which are the angels the celestial luminaries it sounds like celestial luminaries came down is the world going to see that is there something within this period of time at the at the coming of christ for 40 days as the son of man is there something like this that might happen well what do these heavenly luminaries do luke 2 verse 14 and 15. glory to god in the highest and on peace uh, and on earth peace goodwill toward men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away in uh from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us go to bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the lord hath made known unto us the heavenly luminaries <coughs> who came down are coming down at the beginning of the 40 days and there will be shepherds who will then go into the land to find the son of man who won't be coming as a newborn baby it's the exact typology that we keep showing from isaiah 9. northern israel and two cities will be lightly attacked pretty serious though and then what happens for unto us a child is born is christ going to show up as a child no he's coming as the son of man and he's warning the world before nation against nation begins and before syria brings the compassing attack on jerusalem and judah so back into luke chapter 2 what does this multitude of heavenly hosts do they come and reveal themselves to the shepherds who were minding their flocks in the field who will now be fired up because of what they just saw and know that the son of man is there and will somehow in this prophetic is to come typology will make their way there i would assume being translated in some sense you see that well what about this word heavenly what is this what is this period of time equal luke 21 and the exact same watchers conversation of the two places in jeremiah in chapter 4. every single one of these three are directly connected to the 40 days all of them well what else do we know as you see then they're going to see then they're going to see the son of man after the heavenly host came down to them well this was the word host of the celestial luminaries and the angels but check out this word heavenly check this out celestial that is belonging to listen to this or coming from the sky coming from 
the sky to the earth to tell shepherds that the Son of Man is on his way or essentially just about here. In this case, he was here, right? Do you think we have a typology of that in the is to come of Luke's discourse? Let's have a look. We know this compassing about and so forth, right? And listen to what it says, though. We know in Luke 21, 27, that it says, And when they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. When is the typology of the Son of Man coming here? At his birth. Luke in order. At the time of his birth. Related to the 40 days of the Son of Man. Well, look where it starts in chapter in verse 25 of Luke 21 that's happening first. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Interesting that we've revealed now the sun, the moon, and the timing in the stars. Hello. And upon the earth, distress of nations. There's already going to be distress and anxiety. Okay, the bride's already gone, man. It's already going to be some chaos breaking out on the earth. Distress of nations with perplexity. They're going to be in a quandary, man. See, at mental loss. See, they're going to be at a loss. They're going to be freaking out. Why? Well, because there's a bunch of things starting to happen to the earth and millions of people, tens of millions of people have vanished. And then what happens? Verse 26, men's hearts failing them. See, heart attacks. For fear and for looking after. Okay, they're going to be looking after something that's coming upon the earth. Those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken now i believe part of this as we have shared many times is related to the stone's throw but i think we might have even a little bit more understanding men's hearts are failing them for fear for looking at things that are coming upon the earth because the powers of heaven have been shaken I believe it's quite possible this is more than just the events of the stone's throw. Because it also happens before they get to see the Son of Man and the beginning of his 40 days. What did we just see related to Luke 21 in relation to this exact same time, but a group of angels and a multitude of heavenly hosts? which are celestial luminaries being told to us as coming from the sky, are they going to be on the earth as luminaries? Or are they coming as luminaries and people seeing this also coming, are they coming to just reveal themselves to the shepherds around the world to inform them that the son of man is about to come in the clouds or in in a cloud who are the ones that are going to see him in a cloud just the working shepherds just the luke 21 guys the ones that'll put their necks on the line the ones that will surround and compass what have you ever wondered what on earth is going to give these guys that strength and that power and that ability that they no longer need faith is it that jesus when he comes as the son of man is just going to say hey i'm him you've been preparing that could be part of it right but how about 
a group of angels of celestial lights coming from above and letting all the workers know. Hello. That's pretty wild, right? And why this fascinated me so much is because every portion of that first army angel group and the workers from Luke's discourse that related to Luke chapter 2 and that was connected to Jeremiah 24, uh, Jeremiah 4, every single one of those connections and conversations within them are directly related to the 40 days of the Son of Man in Luke 21. But remember, as we bring this to a close, remember how in Jeremiah, there was one more place where this group of workers was found, and they were found in the rapture year, in the seventh year. Now, I'm going to take you to the other place, as you saw, in Acts chapter 7. But now we're not looking at it in the same context because what we're looking for is the host. We're not looking for this, this heavenly host, but we're looking to those that have this, this reference, this, this kind of, of um, uh, uh, remember, because angels, there's the good and the bad, right? This is not the same reference of angels. They are angels, but they're not the same ones. You see, you got to remember, in Luke chapter 2, these heavenly hosts left. All right? But what I am showing you is that in Acts chapter 7, the other place where we find information about a host of angels is in the same context of time as it was in the second place it was found in Jeremiah. But let me show you this. Does Revelation tell us about a different, a different group, a, a, a different stars celestial luminaries that comes right how about revelation chapter 12 verse 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven behold a great red dragon seven horns uh, uh seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads do you know when this is this is when the Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months. This is, this is the time of the 40 days and the two and a half years of World War III. That's what Revelation chapter 12, 2 is. Just that. This is two and a half years of tribulation of seals. This is when the Antichrist is going to be given his power by the dragon. Okay, and what does the dragon do? Sometime around the midst of seals and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the, and the dragon stood before the woman and was, that was, which was ready to be delivered and for to devour her chill, child as soon as it was born. Late seals, right? Probably even what? Hello. At that time of the sixth seal? So what's happening at that time? Antichrist is ruling and reigning. There's bad luminaries that have been cast down. That people are going to fall for with the Antichrist, of course, right? Does this mean it's just going to be light people walking around? No, I don't think so. They'll probably indwell or possess the people, whatever that might play out like. 
They're not the same ones from Luke chapter 2 because they just appeared to them, got the shepherds fired up, and they left. This group of stars is being cast to the earth. So while the Antichrist is here and this is being cast to the earth, do you think people will maybe worship? Maybe people will fall for some of these people? Of course. Absolutely they will. It's tribulation time. Well, with that in mind, let's go to Acts chapter 7. Remember the timing of Acts chapter 7. In the chapters to years, it just so happens that Acts chapter 7 lines up to the seven year, seventh year of seals. Let's have a look what Acts chapter 7 has to tell us in the context of all of this. Watch this. Acts chapter 7, the story is in verse 42, okay? Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, okay? As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Ye took up the tabernacles of Moloch and the star of your God. Hello. Do you see the conversation going on here? He just said, by the space of the 40 years in the wilderness, which was a direct relation to what? The time of Moses. The seals is a typology of the reference of Moses' time. So the 40 years of them being in the wilderness is the relation of the typology of the 42 months when they're having fled in the wilderness. Look at verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. See? Watch this. Let me show you a great word. Look at this. In Acts chapter 7, let me do I want to go to that first. Watch this. In verse 30, I think we'll start in 30. Remember, it's a typology to the period of time of the end of seals. Let's go to verse 30. Acts 7, verse 30. And when the 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai the angel of the Lord in a flame of fire. Listen to what he says in verse 34. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in egypt right which is this is the wilderness we're talking about the typology of seals who are those who are a part of this affliction those who are part of the rapture at the time of passover which is connected to the bread of affliction I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send them into Egypt. Listen to this. What did he say? And am come down to deliver them. He saw their affliction. He brought them to the wilderness. The time of being in the wilderness is coming to an end, the end of seals. At the end of seals, he's coming on heavenly Mount Zion to where he's going to gather them, as we just read in Jeremiah 31, at Passover time, for those that were part of the bread of affliction. He is then going to come down 
which is on heavenly Mount Zion, where they're going to be gathered to. And what does he say he's going to do? He says he's going to deliver them. Deliver means to tear out. It means deliver, to pluck out, to rescue, to release. Check this out. Do you know the word for harpazo? To forcibly cease upon. To Sorry, forcibly seize upon. To snatch away. It means to grab by force. What does it say? To tear out. To pluck out. Isn't that interesting? Do you know why? Because the great multitude rapture is the group that goes where? Well, here they are, which relates to the end of the sixth seal when the was caught up takes place. And this is when he delivers them out, which means to pluck out, to tear out. And harpazo means what? Caught up. Harpazo means to seize, to take by force, to pluck. So the ones who are was caught up, are the ones, when you go to 2 Corinthians 12, the was caught up. Where are they going? The mountain of the Lord, which is what? Paradise. Paradise. It's the exact same reference of period of time that we read about from Jeremiah chapter 31. So when he comes and delivers them out at this time, it's the word pluck, right? And it happens what? In the seventh year. Let's just go for for fun. <laughs> I was going to get a lot more creative. Let's just go for fun and go to Jeremiah, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 8. 40 days come to an end of the Son of Man. The raven spirit is sent out. The dove then goes out on day 50. It's the anointing of those disciples who had followed the Lord for 40 days. will receive that anointing on day 50. <laughs> will then flee out from Jerusalem and go and start doing their work. And the raven will then attack. The compassing about took place and Syria will attack. And look what happens. The dove is now back in the ark. The dove has gone back to heaven. And look at what it says. For those that haven't seen this before, in Genesis 8, verse 10, look what it says. He stayed yet seven other days. The dove <coughs> stayed yet seven other days. So this is like seven years. Seven days is like seven years. That's the typology. So what happens in the seventh year? The dove is sent out again, and what does it do? It comes in with an olive leaf, which can also mean branch, plucked off. Who did we just see was plucked? The rapture group of the great multitude, right? But then when that happens, there's still seven years of trumpets. So when the Holy Spirit goes again, the Holy Spirit is gone for seven more days, which represent years, and then is sent out. So that's 14 years. And when the dust out, the 6,000 years, the 14 years is over, and it'll be just like the typology of 600 years, but it will be the 6,000th year. Check this out. See the word stayed? So this is now at the beginning of the 14 years. The dove has just left. It's early February, 2023. And look at what it says. Instead of stayed, look at this word stayed. It's the exact same sentence. And he stayed yet seven, uh, uh, other seven days. And he stayed yet other seven days. The second one, means exactly what you would think, to wait, to be patient, and so forth. But the first one, what does the first one represent? The beginning of the 14 years. Nation against nation, tribulation begins. And look at what the word says. It's not wait. It's pain, sorrow, travail. Hello. <laughs> so awesome. When is this? The beginning of the 14 years. 
70 and 74 to 5 from when they came into the land, but the end of 70 to the Lord. Exactly. Exactly what it just said that we read from Jubilees. Man, I love doing this. How have ever can you tell? Have you ever noticed? <laughs> so let's keep let's finish up a little bit more in Acts. Uh in Acts chapter 7. Because there's still great more great connections. We're almost done. I was only warming you up and saying I was almost done. <laughs> you guys know better, right? So listen to this. There was uh uh and delivered him out of his afflictions. There it was again. We saw that um the affliction again, and when he delivered, I mean, we clearly know, okay. This is those going to paradise, the great multitude rapture. And then what does he say? Um, oh, yeah, watch this. Okay. There was those angels, right? Those ones that had been cast down that people were falling for. And let's keep going. See, again, it's about Moses. And spoke to Moses about the appointed time, right? That he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. Talking about this, this. The, the 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 tabernacle that had to be built. And listen to this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Listen to this. Acts 7, 55 and 56. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadily, steadfastly into heaven. This is talking about Stephen, right? Who was being stoned. And saw the glory of god comma and jesus standing on the right hand of god and said behold i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god do you guys know when you understand who the gospels are speaking to and you get to the end of mark it's the typology of getting to the end of seals and it relates to this group with the commission when the lord seals the 144,000 which is revelation chapter 7 and listen to what he says which you will only find in the synoptic gospels at the end of the story you only find this in mark's gospel which is the typology of the end of seals. Look at what it says. Mark 6, verse 19. Then, uh, so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. You don't get that at the end of Luke's uh, gospel. The end of Luke's gospel relates to the time of the end of the 40 days. <clears throat> this relates to the end of seals. Matthew's relates to the end of trumpets. There's a video on that. You'll see that in the pre, mid, and post in the intro videos if you're new. This is, again, a direct correlation to Psalms. I'm not going to go all the way down this rabbit trail. But it's a direct correlation to Psalms 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, the Father said unto the Son, sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. When he sits at his right hand, what is he going to be? He's going to be as Melchizedek, high priest and king. He is one of the two witnesses. What? If you're new, don't worry. It's too much. If you're new, just listen to the rest. <laughs> Go listen to those intro videos. All right. So here it is again. We can show the evidence over and over. In this case here with Acts, we showed the evidence of chapters to years. In, in Jeremiah, we showed the understanding of Jeremiah. In Luke, we showed it in Luke in order. In the year count, we can show Leviticus to the truth of the revelation, to the discourses, to the season and time, to the Psalms. Did you catch all that? We went into the law of Moses, into the Psalms, into the prophets, into the gospels, into the end, in two and a half hours. 
of back to back lined up piece by piece over and over and over again it is true it is connected and it's all in order brothers and sisters it's awesome all right i pray brothers and sisters that this has blessed you i pray that this is a great ending to a wonderful five year and change ministry and what i say ending i mean that if we have understood the season and time as has been clearly revealed <clears throat> in the first half of this video then i should have no intention of making another video but if the beginning of hanukkah passes then maybe we'll be able to convince mike over at interrupts 165 to do a live show maybe on the evening of monday the 19th and make that our big hurrah gathering together live show invite people in discuss about these things prepare watch but brothers and sisters when i say the end of the ministry i'm saying i believe it's the end of the video ministry as we have known it and from there we'll see how the lord moves each and every one of us whom he has prepared for such a time as this in the final generation with the revelation of prophecy and the season and time of its start brothers and sisters i love you god bless you god bless your families remember for all those that get called to the third heaven that get pre-trib escaped raptured as the bride and guests of christ sit in the lowest room and wait to see if you are invited to the upper room that you might recline and enjoy that blessing because it will all be a blessing regardless. And whether you're chosen to remain and to work, I myself do not yet know with absolute certainty, even for myself. But whatever the case may be, I pray with all of my heart that I have done everything that I could to prepare the body he has sent to hear, to receive, and to understand in the revelation of his love and if that be the case i will see you all on his battlefield i love you god bless you again god bless your families we'll see you soon bye for now